is Dragon Ball Daima GT 2.0? At one point in time, I would have said no without even a second thought. When the first trailer was released for Daima, this was a lot of people's first impression, mainly because Goku was once again becoming a kid, like he did in the beginning part of GT. Not only that, but the trailers depict a similar sequence as well. If you remember before Goku was turned into a kid, he was sparring with Oob in the Heavenly Realm, also known as Kami's Lookout. This is somewhat recreated when we see Goku and Vegeta sparring in the same area, then moments later being reverted to kids. Coincidentally, Shenron is also shown before we see Goku reverted, implying it was a wish that started this. However, it becomes pretty obvious that this isn't the case. In trailer 4, we see Goku and Vegeta looking each other up and down. This was excluded from the trailer, which means that Goku and Vegeta didn't notice they were kids up until this point. This alongside everyone else's reaction, it more so implies that this was at a time in the story that the curse fell upon them. Which leads us to our next talking point. It wasn't a wish made by Shenron, but a curse placed on them from the demon realm. The scene of Shenron being summoned is more than likely an attempt from the Z Fighters to reverse the effects, which Shenron will undoubtedly say it's beyond his power to do so. Currently, we don't know who placed this curse on Goku in game, but there's a good chance it's either the Demon King, this new witch, or the angel looking character we see in the trailers. You could say that the power of a demon in both Daima and GT leads to Goku going on a space adventure in order to ultimately reverse the effects. For those confused on the GT side of this, let me explain. Before splitting into Kami and King Piccolo, the nameless Demekian created the Black Star Dragon Balls, which would technically mean that a demon made them. Since before they split, it was mentioned that there was a great evil inside him, which was Demon King Piccolo. Not only will Goku be going on a space adventure, but it will be with the new cast. In the case of GT, it was Trunks and Pan. In Daima, it will be Glorio and Pansy. Glorio and Trunks act as more mature, well-rounded characters, being the navigator and handyman. Pansy and Pan act as the rebellious, troublesome character, keeping things interesting. Goku is obviously Goku, and the Kaioshin in this instance will be the Giru replacement, since without both of them, Goku wouldn't be able to continue the journey. Vegeta will undoubtedly be left on Earth for the first part of the story, like in GT, and revisited later. Judging from the scenes in the trailer, Goku and Vegeta aren't around each other after they've been turned into kids, so this lines up. From what I understand, there will be a lot of individual places within the demon realm Goku and Ko will explore, in pursuit of the one who put this curse on them, as well as the one who kidnapped Dende. I'd imagine that the Demon King will be the primary suspect until it's revealed that he hasn't been the one who captured Dende. It's possible though he did place the curse on them, but it's hard to say. Either way, we have a parallel with one of the main villains looking to seek revenge on the Saiyans for something they did in the past. Still not sure about the relation between Deborah and Goma, but if it's a family tie, it'll be that much more like Baby feeling the pain of his people who were brought to extinction by the Saiyans. Goma doesn't really look like Baby though, but someone we see later in trailer 3 does. It's a pretty quick scene, but the structure around the eyes and the nature is uncanny, and it gives bio vibes. In addition to this, we also see a Dr. Mew-like villain in the fourth trailer towards the end. So far, we still don't have any information about this guy. Similar to the first part of GT, there's a lot of villains that are being introduced, and I'm sure little by little we'll peel back the layers of who's who and get down to the very root of the issue. One of the biggest spoilers to come out of Dragon Ball Daima is the fact that Vegeta will become a Super Saiyan 3 at some point in the show. When this happens, it will surely break the internet. For the longest time, it's only existing in fan art and video games, but now it'll be canon. Sort of. There's actually a little more detail involving Vegeta becoming a Super Saiyan 3 that I feel most people don't know about. For starters, Vegeta in Super Saiyan 3 isn't going to look like how we've traditionally seen this form. His will look different, going back to the original depiction of Super Saiyan 3. This was discarded for the long-haired version that we see today. There could be a few reasons for this. Most likely it has to do with the new age of Dragon Ball giving everyone exclusive form. Since Super Saiyan 3 isn't exclusive, it will be the first and more than likely the last time Vegeta uses it, so his special appearance I'm assuming is going to be grandacious. Another reason could be that Toriyama is feeling nostalgic. Either way, it'll surely be a sight to behold. This, however, is also a GT reference, and here's why. Sometime after Vegeta's body was taken by Baby, he undergone two transformations. They're labeled as Super Baby 1 and 2, which are meant to represent Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3. Some clear indicators for this is the fact that Super Baby 1 doesn't look that different from regular Baby Vegeta, like how Super Saiyan 2 doesn't look too much different from Super Saiyan, and Super Baby 3 changes his visual appearance entirely, which includes his hair growing out longer and the removal of his eyebrow, just like Super Saiyan 3. Many people forget about about this, but regular baby Vegeta is baby already in Super Saiyan, which should be obvious since he's able to be in base when he was tricking trunks. His silver hair is an indication of Super Saiyan. Why it's silver? I don't know. So not only will Vegeta become a Super Saiyan 3 in both stories, but his version of it will also look traditionally different as well. And to top it off, the appearance of the Tamagotchi has a strong resemblance to the Shadow Dragons. They had the quickest appearance in the fourth trailer, showcasing the new Dragon Balls while being powered by them. Besides this very quick shot though, we don't know much about their origin or purpose in the story. Just off appearance alone, however, we we can make the resemblance. And that's pretty much it. There is no denying the parallels between Daima and GT, and I'm sure as the show progresses on, we'll see even more. If everything I've said up to this point means that Daima is GT 2.0 in your opinion, I completely understand. Having 
said that, there's still a lot about Daimon that's very different from GT, starting with this notion of Goku becoming a kid actually. Goku's been referred to as many rather than being a kid. I've said Kid Goku a lot in this video, but it was just to reveal this fact later. This may be only in Goku's case though, since we see Goten and Trunks are very clearly reverted into babies in this scene here. Goku from my understanding is the only one who's been referred to as many, as far as I know anyway, so perhaps it's special to him. In addition to this, everyone has been cursed, not just Goku this time around, which tells me that it won't just be Goku time. I could see the first part of Daima having him at the helm, but with scenes of Vegeta and Piccolo fighting in the trailer, it's very possible we get to see our guys in action. The most that Piccolo did in GT is die, pretty much. It was very disappointing. Funny enough, he had very important roles in GT, but was never rewarded for them, if that makes sense. The story of GT ends with Piccolo spending the rest of his years in hell, which is just horrible. Since the main villain I'm theorizing is the Namekian we've been seeing in the trailers, I'm thinking that this could be interesting. And if that's correct, we could see Namekians in a spotlight we haven't yet, which would certainly excite Piccolo fans. Which leads us to the next big difference. Regardless if he's the main villain or not, we have a Namekian as one of the bad guys, which we haven't seen since Lord Slug and Demon King Piccolo. It's a hunch, but I believe that this Namekian will be somewhat of a Demon King Piccolo Piccolo revamp. I think he wants to regain his youth again. And when he does, he'll be the strongest person in the show. Next to Goku. It is Dragon Ball's 40th anniversary. How crazy would it be if we got a Goku vs Demon King Piccolo rematch? That's a nostalgia hit I wouldn't mind getting. Also, Daima is less of a space adventure and more of a demon realm one. Obviously, yes, Goku will travel through space in a spaceship, but he won't have his adventures there, like with GT. No doubt we'll see different worlds within the demon realm, but not space. The new Dragon Balls that will be featured in Daima is going to be different than the Black Star Dragon Balls as well. It was revealed in spoilers that the new dragon will look somewhat like the one from the Black Star Dragon Balls, but resemble Purunga in body wise. I'm sure the idea of Earth being destroyed as a result of these wish ores being used won't be taken from GT, but I can't say for certain. Needless to say, there are things about Daima that won't be included in GT. Though, from what we know right now, it does seem like Toriyama wanted to make GT in his own way with this Daima project, which I'm all for, really. The biggest thing, though, that will be different is Goku, especially in Dragon Ball GT. This portrayal of Goku is different when compared to his past iterations. In GT, Goku returns to a simpler, more nostalgic version of himself, both in appearance and demeanor. His clothes reflect his earlier years with calmer and more tranquil colors, symbolizing his return to a carefree nature and an adventurous spirit. This shift in Goku's personality is evident from the beginning of the series. In one of the opening scenes, we witness a bank robbery while Goku is casually eating ramen. Despite his chaos, he remains largely indifferent, telling others not to disturb him. Explosions and gunfire erupt around him, but he's more so concerned with the debris falling into his food than the actual danger. It's only when the building he's eating in is blowing up that Goku finally decides to intervene, seemingly more irritated than genuinely concerned about stopping the robbers. His initial reaction illustrates his laid-back attitude. He simply wants to enjoy his meal and relax without getting involved in absolutely anything unnecessary. Later in the series, when Goku, Trunks, and Pan visit M2, they discover that people are suffering under a brutal dictatorship. The tyrannical regiment has plunged the planet into poverty and despair. However, Goku remains largely largely unconcerned. Even when the dire situation is pointed out to him, his relaxed attitude stands in stark contrast to the gravity of the circumstances, reinforcing his newfound sense of detachment from serious matters. Goku's transformation in Dragon Ball GT marks a notable departure from the character we knew in Dragon Ball Z. By GT, Goku has embraced a much more carefree outlook on life. This shift in his personality is mirrored by his physical transformation into a child. Even in moments where Goku appears to be struggling, whether it's against the villains like General Rildo or the M2 robots, there's a sense that he's not taking things too seriously. He's not fighting with the same intensity as before. Instead, he's just having fun, enjoying these challenges presented to him. At one point, Goku even admits this, highlighting how he's more interested in teaching and helping others grow rather than focusing on his own struggles. However, one question remains. Why is Goku so relaxed in GT? It's easy to assume that his overwhelming strength plays a role, but that's not necessarily the full story. Even when facing dangerous foes like Baby or Super 17, Goku continues to smile and laugh. For instance, during his battle with Super 17, Goku is on the verge of being vaporized, yet he remains lighthearted and even marveling at how fun he's having and how much impressive he is by his opponent's strength. His attitude suggests that his immense power isn't the reason for his carefree demeanor. The real reason for Goku's newfound peace lies in his personal journey. By the end of Dragon Ball Z, Goku's art has essentially come to a conclusion. He had achieved everything he set out to do, discovering his true self, fulfilling his dreams, and even seeing the wish of fighting Majin Buu again. Goku's ultimate goals have been realized, and he reached a rather point of contentment, having completed the major milestone in his life. While his passion for fighting strong opponents remained, it was no longer an urgent pursuit. In his mind, Goku had accomplished all that he needed to, and this sense of fulfillment allowed him to adapt a more relaxed and carefree attitude throughout GT. However, this version of Goku won't be present in Dragon Ball Daima. In Daima, we're likely to see more of the energetic and enthusiastic Goku we all know and love. While GT Goku is relaxed and content, Daima Goku will still be driven by that youthful excitement and passion for adventure. This contrast between the two series highlights how Goku's character changes depending on the circumstances, but also reminds us at his core that Goku is always seeking new challenges and enjoying the thrill of the fight.